Well, today I thought we'd take a look at uh, what happens when you solder to a strain gauge, how to pick the right kind of solder tip. And so what I've got here is a strain gauge that Quinn has bonded. Uh, get a close up of that. Now, this is an open face strain gauge and the foil here is about roughly 200 micro inches thick, so 200 millionths of an inch. So the point we wanna make about strain gauge soldering is this foil, unlike printed circuit board soldering, uh, where you're soldering to a thicker copper, this foil has no thermal mass. And let's take a look at how that influences tip selection. So imagine that these are the two strain gauge tabs that we just looked at. Now, when people begin strain gauge soldering, their first inclination is to use a very tiny, sharp pointed tip. And here's what can happen when you go down that road. Let's say this Sharpie pin is a sharp pointed tip and I touch the foil here at this surface right there. Point contact. This foil again has no thermal mass. It's not gonna transfer heat. So my tip temperature that's hot enough to melt the solder might radiate about out here. And this solder melts at 361 degrees Fahrenheit. And what I find is the foil out here is too cold to melt the solder. So what do I do? Well, the first inclination is I'm gonna crank the temperature up. So I might crank the temperature up a little bit. Well, now my circle of heat transfer got just a little bit bigger if I touch the foil right here. Now this area is at 361 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to flow or melt the solder. This area out here is still too cold. So what do you do? You keep cranking up the heat until your circle gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But now your tip temperature might be at 800, 900 degrees Fahrenheit. So now you go back to this, you're still trying to solder. And what you find out is this foil here is at 800 degrees and you just melted or, or uh, you know, destroyed the strain gauge tab. Now it's got a bubble in it. The tabs come loose from the gauge and you got to start all over again. Not fun. So let me show you how to avoid that. Often in strain gauge work, you'll hear it mentioned that you want to use a flat type screwdriver tip, a tip that has a flat surface. And contrary maybe to inclination or intuition, you want that tab to be big enough to cover most of the strain gauge foil all at one time. This is how you can solder in just a split second. Now, let's say that this glass plate is that flat surface. You see with a surface like that, I can cover most of the string gauge tab all at once. That heat transfers at a low temper lower temperature. I can have a tip temperature of 630 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, not hot enough to harm the string gauge. And I'm gonna transfer that heat to the foil almost instantly, flow the solder and be done with it. So when you're holding the pencil, again, even with a flat tip, you don't wanna hold it like this. The idea is to transfer heat. So what you want to do with this flat surface is look at the flat, hold it almost at an angle like this. So that flat surface has maximum contact with the strain gauge. Let's get our strain gauge back here. Kind of like this. Okay. And then that's going to transfer the heat very quickly, allows to make a very fast smooth solder connection, get out of there before we do any damage to the strain gauge. So let's take a look at that. Okay, for our advice, typically we're gonna clean the tip, lightly tin the tip. By the way, this is a rosin core solder, so we do have flux in the solder. Don't necessarily need to use any external flux. So we're gonna place the solder on our gauge tab. We're gonna hold the tip so that that flat surface that I've tinned with solder is in contact. Feed in a little fresh solder and flux and pull them both away at the same time. Now, you can see the tiny string gauge tab actually has a nice shiny pillow of solder. So that's how you do it quick. That's how you do it uh, without damaging the string gauge. So please share it, pass along the knowledge.